Good morning. We're here to discuss the retrofitting of a kettle well frictionless mouthpiece to a Seidel Saxony orchestra tuned. Now I'm gonna go over what the current theory is for how to do this, and you might have a comment or two. This is not a dead stock instrument. The stanchion cover screws have been removed and it has a custom button that's far more comfortable to the hand in any angle of play. But it's a great harp. <clears throat> and if you take a look up here, you'll see this thing. That's called an H-bar in there, that metal piece that looks like a little I-beam. Can you see it? Yeah, there it is. Little teeny I-beam. Squeezes the reed plates, it's steel, and then the mouthpiece sits on it. So it's a, uh, it's a very, very stable instrument physically because it has an aluminum comb, German silver reed plates. It's just solid. It's a good choice for frictionless. Well, <clears throat> as we take a look at this slider part here, Okay, we'll get into this part in a minute or two. Let's talk about this. There's only one surface on this that means anything as far as air tightness goes. The top. That's it. Just the top. Sides don't matter. Bottom doesn't matter. Just, just the top. So all I have to do is take this into a machine shop with the slide taken out and have them make sure that it is absolutely cut perfectly flat. That's a pretty simple maneuver on it for a machine shop. Then the next thing that has to happen is that I'm going to need a slider that has a little bit of torsional wiggle as saliva builds up a little, but that is absolutely totally flat on the top and has from one to five holes. I think that I'm personally going to start with a one hole version, but people that use a lot of tongue blocking are going to want a five. I want the one because it allows for a relaxed lip pucker embouchure. You won't have to do this. You can just relax your lips and place it on the, on the mouthpiece. So it gives you a single hole relaxed. I like that idea. Pretend I'm Charlie Parker. You only play one note at a time and a trumpet on a sax. I hope you'll be okay with that. Um, so anyhow, <clears throat> so what about this, this slider? Well, in the most rudimentary form, it could be made out of epoxy, putty epoxy, that's shaped onto the mouthpiece. If you were to be able to fill the holes with some kind of plastic, you could remove because you're going to be pressing that putty onto here and you could even imprint your lip shape so you had a very ergonomic shape to your lips. I'd have to drill the holes in that plastic piece when it dried, but it would have to fit absolutely perfectly mating onto the top. That's cheap, nine bucks to buy that, but it's not going to be easy to fill those holes and to get it out of those holes because when I put that putty on it's going to go into those mouthpiece holes. That's not good. The other thing, make it out of silver. The, the slider could be made out of silver, and I would make it about probably two millimeters thick, so it's kind of stiff, but it would have to retain its absolute flatness on top. And of course, when you squeeze stuff, as you know, it bends. So you've got to be careful there. Well, how to make it not fall off? Let's say that it was made and, you know, it was plastic or it was metal. Well, you could hold it in such a way it didn't fall off. That would be the most rudimentary form. Easiest to clean, by the way. But you could take and you could cut a little teeny channel in the mouthpiece. A little teeny channel. You could bend this edge over a little bit and have that ride in the channel. Not gripping. Just keep it from falling off. And then if you were to drill a teeny little hole in the mouthpiece here, and a teeny little hole and put little screws in that had a pop head on them, it couldn't get off. So those are the easy ways. My first fabrication, 
I don't think I'm going to be worried about it coming off on that one. But the question is how to make that. It could be made out of brass and then silver plated. Of course, the mouthpiece is brass, so silver moving on brass will work, will work well. Um, you could use titanium or carbon steel. I don't know what the machine shop's going to say that's going to work the best. But again, it's only the top surfaces that count and the pressure of the lips to the mouthpiece will be sufficient to make it airtight. If you try to make it airtight everywhere, like at the bottom and on the sides, you'll have too much friction to work well. And so if it's just, if it only fits, I want it to be able to move a little bit left and right on there. Not a lot, but maybe 10, 10 thousandths of an inch. It's not going to be super tight because I don't care about the fit of the sides, the side of the mouthpiece to the side of the slider. It didn't mean anything. Give it a little bit of slop. Not a lot of slop, but enough where it's not gripping. And I don't want it to grip on the bottom if I do the claw thing to grip either. I don't want that tight. The only thing that has to be tight at the top. So you just, that's how you do it. Anyway, that's the game plan for retrofitting of a Kettlewell frictionless mouthpiece to a Seidel Saxony orchestra tuned chassis. It's a very airtight heart. If I make that frictionless mouthpiece correctly, it'll work real well. This is the simplest method to do it.